So excited to welcome in Eagles offensive lineman Nate Herbie for our one-on-one -on -one presented by Bob's Discount Furniture. Nate, thanks for joining us, man. Happy to be here. So let's talk about your background. When did you start playing football? Um, I started playing football when I was in the sixth grade. Um, and I didn't play tackle football until I was in the eighth grade, actually. Now, and, and you grew up in, in Hawaii, right? So what, what was the, uh, in terms of like how many guys that you were playing with, was it, um, you know, a huge league? Were there different weight classes? Like, did you have to play like uh, above your weight class, below your weight class? How, how was that for you growing up? Well, I, I couldn't play in the, in Pop Warner. I was way too big, way too big. So I had to wait till I got to middle school for an unlimited league called Kauai Youth Football. And that was really the first time I got to play tackle football so what was your uh, your first position were you, were you uh, an offensive tackle did you play center did you play d line like what, when you started playing uh what was your first position uh i played d line when i first started and what, what was that like did you uh did you enjoy that part of it when did you first make the transition over to offense when i realized that everyone kept telling me that i was built like offensive lineman not like a defensive lineman so ever since i was told that it's just i've been on the offensive line ever since and then you go through the, the college recruiting process. You end up going to Stanford. I know there were some other Pac-12 schools uh, that were involved as well. What went into the decision to go to Stanford, and uh, how did you ultimately settle in on them? Um, my parents wanted me to get an education um, first and foremost, and they felt like Stanford gave me the best opportunity to excel in the classroom and on the football field. Sure. And now take us through this, because I would love to get a kind of a look into your mind in terms of, what you do from a preparation every week. When you're looking at the opponent, are you looking at defensive tackles only? Are you looking at the defensive ends as well as, you know, just in, in preparation in case you need to move out to guard or to any of the different spots? Are you looking at linebackers as well? What goes into your scouting report every week as you get ready for a game? I mean, uh, I, I look at uh, some of the moves they do, like I'll watch third down, uh, a defensive tackle if he likes a long arm or he likes to swim and I don't play into it I just uh, think in the back of my head all right he has this in his pocket like be ready for that be ready for this like as I'm taking a set so I mean I, I wouldn't say I like go too much into it because I feel like just like you are game planning they're game planning and they watch you and try to pick out your weaknesses so I try not to dive too deep into that. Sure. It's, it's always interesting talking with guys about uh, how far they go into it. Some guys I know don't watch until late in the week. Some guys will start watching early. I want to ask you this, though. I need, a, I need a good scouting report on a linebacker, and I feel like you could provide the best scouting report for Nick Herbig, the linebacker at Wisconsin, a true freshman, uh, your younger brother. Uh, take us through the – give us a scouting report here on Nick. I think he's been averaging close to two TFLs a game, which is uh, <laughs> up there in the country, but that's about it. Uh, I'd say he's more of a run stopper. He can't pass rush right now. He only has one sack, and that's very disappointing to me. He's supposed to be this big-time freshman, but I guess he, <laughs> he doesn't know how to pass rush yet. Sure. And what was it like growing up? Two guys, obviously, you know, relatively close in age. Uh, how did you guys play other sports other than football? Yeah, we played. I played basketball with him. We were on the same basketball team. We wrestled together. Um, he was actually on one of my football teams, and. I mean, we just did a lot, like everything together growing up. It was always a competition. Uh, you mentioned that wrestling background. Uh, how much of that do you feel carries over to the football field? I know that's something a lot of scouts and coaches will look for with guys, whether they're coming from high school or going from college to the NFL. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't know. It's been a long time since I've wrestled, but uh, it just taught me how to like, keep my balance and fight pressure with pressure, I feel like, personally. So I'm thankful for it. Sure. And then one last question for you, Nate, and then we'll cut you loose here. Uh, you're a couple years now into your NFL career, playing along the offensive line. You've played a couple of different positions up front. What's one part of playing in the trenches, playing at the offensive line, that you feel isn't talked about enough, which with media, with fans, uh, everybody covering the game and watching the game at home? Um, I just feel like being an offensive line – it's one of the hardest positions to play in football, just because not taking anything from any, any t not taking anything away from any other position, just because I I feel like you can block a guy all game, and you he beats you two out of eighty times, and that's two sacks. That's a terrible game for you, and that's a great game for him, even though it's really seventy eight to 
two, you know. So I think that's one of the, the toughest things of being an offensive lineman. You get no credit, but, you know, you just got to do your job. If, if your name's not called, that's usually a good thing. Yep, no question. One of the most thankless positions in all of sports. Well, Nate, thanks so much here for joining us for our one-on-one -on -one presented by Bob's Discount Furniture. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll talk to you soon, man. Yep, thank you.